Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and today we're going to go into introductions to rigging. So the purpose of rigging is to be able to move geometry and transform it so that it is ready for animation or even just to pose, which is what we're going to do today. What I'm going to do is actually start off with a cylinder and then increase the subdivisions so that it will be able to deform properly. I'm also going to get rid of the cap. So it doesn't, I'm not too concerned about the top. So I always recommend that you delete your history and freeze your transformations. And we're going to go into the front or side view so that we can see where the joints are going to go. Here is our uh, geometry and under animation, we're going to go to skeleton joint tool. And the way joints work is that they're actually, ch uh, they have a child and parent information. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I mean by that is you click once and then just go ahead and hold down shift to go hold down shift. So it'll make a straight line and just kind of click a couple of times. And then when you're ready with your chain, just press enter. All right, go back to perspective and you can see that the joints are kind of hard to see underneath the geometry. So we're going to click on this little fancy button right here that button is actually gonna give us x-ray view just for joints, which is ideal. Let's take a look at the outliner. In the outliner, you can see our geometry, but you can also see our joint chain. And notice that you have joint one, joint two, joint three, so on and so forth. That is a child and parent relationship. What that means that if when I select joint one, I can move it around and all the other joints get affected. I can select number two, uh, let's say I wanna rotate it, and you can see that all the, on, uh, the ones above that are going to be affected as well. That's called a parent-child relationship. So the way I explain it is that let's say that you are a parent and you have a child with you and you're in a room and the child can run around all on its own. But then if you're going to go to another room, you take the child by the hand and you walk them to a separate room and then the child can do its own thing. That's basically how it works is that whatever happens to the parent, the child follows, but the child can actually be on its own its own motion. Notice that I can actually rotate these guys and translate it if I want to as well. So if you want to, you can actually translate them. However, if you hold down the letter D as if you're holding down for a manipulator, you can actually move the joint individually and it does not affect the children. So if you need to move joints around individually, that's how you do it. And now I'm going to show you how the magic happens. We're going to select the joint first, which has to be the root joint. That's the first joint then select the geometry and then go to skin bind skin smooth bind you're gonna their joints as you can see has turned into rainbows so what that means is that it's binded to the geometry so i can actually select it rotate it and notice that the geometry follows i can select the second joint and now you can see how it deforms the last joint doesn't really have too much of a purpose. It's mostly for help to aim the child to the last joint. So why do we have this? Well, the cool thing is that we can animate this. So for example, I'm going to select all of the joints and I'm going to bring up my heads up display here, my time slider, and also my range. And I'm going to give myself, let's just say 48 frames. I'm going to start with frame one, click S to keyframe. I'm going to go to 48 and do the same thing. Then I'm going to go halfway, which is around 24 and actually reverse that. So I'm going to grab these guys and just reverse it to the other direction. Again, don't forget to select all of them and click S. And then you get kind of like a wiggling cylinder and this is how all organic objects are actually rigged using joints you can actually you do this with fingers you do this with spines you create a you know it can be biped it can be quadruped it can be um, you know uh, insectoid you basically use joints so that you can animate and deform the object for a better example I'm gonna pull up a hand so you can actually see how you can move and place the joints uh, according to the geometry Okay, so here's a hand and what we want to do is actually place joints so that the fingers are going to bend. So let's say you have a, a model and you just want, want it to grip something. So what we need is uh, you could try to actually move every single vertices as if you want to. However, I recommend joints so you can deform the hand a little bit easier. 
So the first thing you need to remember is that you always want to start off at some sort of orthographic view. The last thing you want to do is create uh, joints and you're going to be guessing and you're going to be like, this looks good. This looks good. This looks good. Okay. And then when you actually look at it, it's, it's really inaccurate. So we need to actually go to some sort of orthographic view. The second thing, if you notice our joint tool, I click on this handy one. When we create joints, notice how large they are. I can easily fix that. I'm going to go under display, animation, joint size. And it doesn't affect anything. It doesn't affect the deformation or anything. It's just a display. It just helps view the joints easier. I'm going to select the root joint and delete that one. And I'm going to go ahead and start the chain. So I'm going to start at the top, another one at the wrist. And then I could put one where the knuckle is and then basically all the other knuckles and also one at the very end for the tip. And then when you're done, press enter. Okay. So, so far so good. However, how do we get another chain to follow? Well, just click on the joint tool, click on one of the joints and then do it again. Knuckle, 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 nope, too many joints. You can always select them and delete it and you can always move them. I turned on the wireframe so I can see where my knuckles are a little bit easier. Again, select the joint, click on this, click on the knuckle, and then knuckle, knuckle, and then the tip. And we're gonna do that for all the fingers. I can see that there's a little weird, whoops, look at that. That's not good. I can fix that. Okay. So notice right away that there's a couple of interesting things going on here. One of them is that I didn't select the right joint. So now I have two chains, right? So I'm going to open up my outliner and you can see that I have, um, a chain that's not attached. So to fix that, there's several ways I can do this. One is that I can actually find out what this one is or grab the palm joint. That's what I'm going to call it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is select joint 16 and joint 20 and then middle mouse and drag it to joint two, which is the palm. And I'm going to go ahead and rename that palm joint. So now those, these joints are parents or children to the palm joint. And that's exactly what I want. Joint 15 is now just floating. So I'm going to delete it. All right, so I have one joint. That's the root joint. I'm going to go ahead and call it that root joint. I have my palm joint and then I have a bunch of other joints to go underneath that. We don't, we basically want to relabel everything and I'm going to show you a fast way of doing that. So the first thing we're going to do is go to uh, modify search and replace. I'm going to look for joint and replace it with pinky joint. So that's one way of changing it and click replace. So you'll see right away that everything underneath the hierarchy pinky is called pinky joint one, uh, three, four, and five. And if you like, you can actually change this to one, two, three, and four. Another way you can do this is by changing the prefix. So, or adding a prefix. So we're going to go to modify prefix hierarchy name. So this is going to be our ring. So let's do ring underscore click. Okay. And you'll see that every single joint is now has a ring underscore joint. All right. So this is the middle one. So modify prefix hierarchy names. This is going to be middle. index underscore and finally thumb. Okay. The second thing we need to do is to actually place the joints inside the geometry. Now these joints actually are not, they're not actually 
there. They're actually just visual representations. It's not like geometry, which actually has, um, you know, a polygon. This is actually just a visual representation. What that means is that uh, the important part of this joint is actually right here in the center. That's where all the influence comes from. So as long as this influence, this point of influence is actually inside the mesh, you're going to be okay. So we're going to select the first joint and we're actually going to move it to the center. And then I'm going to rotate it down just a little bit. And then after that, it's all just about placing the joints inside the mesh. So you're going to select these guys and you can either move them or you can rotate them. It's completely up to you. But you definitely want them to be inside the mesh. So these guys need to be inside. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I know that knuckles are a little bit outside of the... Uh, they're more on top of the... Um, the knuckles or the skin. So I'm going to go ahead and put those there as well. Just sticking out just a little bit so I know that it's actually in the mesh. Might have to like select some of these and just kind of rotate them up a little bit. Again, the influence has to be inside the mesh. So that's exactly what I'm trying to achieve here. move this one back so actually it's in the, and this is okay you guys can move the knuckles around make sure that everything fits okay so if I'm happy with that placement I'm going to select this and then I'm going to freeze its transformation so modify freeze its transformations that means every joint should not have any rotation now notice that the translate doesn't go away. That's okay because we actually need that information or Maya needs that information to be able to deform the geometry properly. So, but you don't need the rotation. So just go ahead and freeze the transformations. And now we're ready to bind. So we're gonna select the joints, then the mesh, skin, bind skin, smooth bind. Now, this is just very, very basic. You can actually go ahead and start moving. There are gonna be some deformation issues you might have a problem with, such as, as you can see, that it's pulling along here. Um, it might pull some other ones, so I'll show you how to quickly paint weights. But um, that's gonna take a little bit longer, but if you don't need to have too much of a dramatic motion, you can actually just uh, start posing your character a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put this mesh in a display layer because I'm going crazy accidentally selecting it. Now, usually if you're going to animate, you never select joints. You usually create controllers for it. How about I make it a little bit of a feminine finger? Whee! Maybe rotate this one a little closer. Display, show, you can actually hide your joints so you can see what your hand looks like. It's getting a little crushed, but at least you can see. There you go, rock on. I will show you guys how to um, paint weights and fix any type of deformations in a later tutorial that gets that becomes a little bit more advanced. And I would also create controllers for this rig, but uh, at least you'll get an idea of how to place joints, how to bind, and then how to move your geometry around. All right, I hope that was helpful, and I will see you in the next tutorial.